this video I'm going to be talking about some military surplus bandages. Now, this bandage right here is very similar to one that you'll get in the old uh, first aid kit, the one that, with the box. I actually uh, showed it in my last video that I made uh, on, you know, turning an Alice pouch into an IFAC pouch. So, uh, this one I got on eBay a long time ago, and uh, it was like, I swear it was like a quarter each. And I got like a pack of 20 of them. And so it was a killer deal, so I didn't want to pass that up, right? So anyways, I wanted to go ahead and uh, look over some of these older military bandages and uh, kind of open them up and uh, show you what you're looking at. And uh, I also wanted to compare it to one of the pieces of kit that was in my uh, IFAC. And basically that's the, the trauma the trauma bandage. So um, I'll go ahead and open that up and compare the modern technology against some of the older technology. And uh, you know, you judge for yourself if it's worth uh, getting some of this older stuff if it would still work. As long as the packaging uh, is okay, I assume it's pretty uh, good to go. But this one is actually compromised, so it's good for demonstration in this video. Okay, so I have three examples for you. Two of these are pretty much the same, and they stayed pretty consistent. This is uh, in pretty good shape, and you can see all the writing on there. It's all good to go. It looks like it was made in the early 90s, and obviously sterility is not uh, guaranteed, you know, if the inner wrapping is... Uh, you know, been damaged or open. So basically, this is what I had in the actual first aid kit. Now, the first aid kit packed with a lot of stuff. You can find them online, uh, like the kit, the pouch with the house clips and everything, basically just like this, uh, with the box in it and everything still packed in it with a sticker. Uh, and you can see the residue from the sticker here. It actually is still was still packed and uh, was a recent had recently been inspected. And uh, you know more recently than when it was originally manufactured, but this is basically what you're looking at as far as the condition. They're packed in there. They're still pretty good, so you can get those for about 15 bucks if you want the whole kit and caboodle. So, anyways, uh, that's on you to go and do, right? So, this is another example that I got uh, separately, uh, just like this one. I got them separately. I believe this was an eBay purchase, and each one of these was like 75 cents or a dollar. Again, these are these I've had for a while, but my cat actually likes to chew on plastic, and I know there's some cats out there that like to do that, but you can see that she actually clamped down on it, so um, this was not really in that great a shape, so yeah, she gave this thing a little bit too much love, so she did uh, puncture this, I don't know what the inside looks like, but it is freely moving, whereas this one is still got a little bit of, you know, a seal to it. This one is just a little bit. It's been used. It's been put in a pocket for a while, and then <clears throat> when I set it down, you know, the cat ended up going at it. So, anyways, I'm going to be using this one. So you have a waterproof container right here, and then this one. I believe this is an older version, or maybe just something that uh, you were just given. It was uh, I obviously doesn't have any waterproofing to it. So this one is not really you know, labeled with an NSN or anything like this one is. This one has its own uh, uh, little uh, coating on it, but I don't think it's necessarily the same. Yeah, so we have that code right there. So 4883, 4883, and then looks like could have been something else. But yeah, so it was in manufactured in the same area or by the same company so yeah I don't really know what what year it was but pretty much the same one's lighter one's darker so yeah this came in a first aid pouch, uh, first aid kit this one did not this was sold separately in a in a box so anyways uh, you have your waterproof packaging, no waterproof packaging, and the only instructions you have is grasp with both hands and firmly twist. So if you don't feel like having these things, uh, you know, waterproof, then sure, it's fine. But you can see that this thing's already compromised as far as like a little bit of sterility because, yeah, it's already open, but this is just cheap paper wrapping. So anyways, you do this, and it loosens it up, lets the air in, I guess, and... Yeah. 
as you can see here basically open it up and there we go put other side next to wound so you put this side pretty well padded let the air get into there and it'll fluff it up pretty well got a lot of gauze and padding in there obviously I'm not going to be putting it on a wound but yeah you can see here fluffs up a good amount and this isn't really the most durable but it's not the weakest material ever I'll see if I can tear it so you know this stuff actually seems to have a pretty good you know uh, resistant to resistance to ripping so you could put a good amount of pressure on it put it over the wound and actually stretch it out a good amount so uh, I had experience with these uh, types in boot camp but they were green which I believe these ones are they it says that it's camouflaged on there so I'm guessing that it's OD that's what I had experience with in boot camp so uh, that's what we had to practice on and those ones uh, sometimes did tear because they were used over and over again for training but yeah you have a good amount of length in these ones so you tie it tie it tie it and then you have your little separators here it would appear that it was on purpose so yeah so you can tie knots and stuff like that or maybe tear it down yeah so you can tear it down all the way if you wish and just have kind of an H bandage if you will so yeah that probably wouldn't work out all that well but I guess you can do it if you need to but let's check yep so it breaks off there so probably not a good idea to tear it down at that point but it's on the same side here so that would be my assumption that it was on purpose to kind of give you something to tie it off with so not too bad but yeah this is an old school bandage and yeah kind of the, the stuff that was used for gunshot wounds for decades so anyways let's go ahead and clean this stuff up and yeah throw it away so there we go an oversized tampon basically and then we got this one so with the waterproof bandage obviously it says tear open and would you look at that looks like the same amount same thing that was going on in here but perhaps they just took off the waterproofing and uh, there we go so yeah this thing looks like it might have been penetrated so not exactly sterile anymore so firmly twist uh, before unwrapping but it, the last one unwrapped on its own right and you can see through here it's dark so definitely OD or, or camouflaged don't touch face of pad or wound um, so I already did that with the last one I kind of screwed that up so apply white side of pad to wound wrap bandage and fasten by tying tails so sterility void if wrapper is broken so so there we go so this is a lot easier because the tails are actually colored so when you get them out you can just grasp them by the tails and that's how or we learned it we grab the tails only and it seems like this material is a little bit more sturdy uh, maybe it's just the paint or the dye they have that seems to firm it up a bit more but you don't even need it illustrated uh, on here which side you put to it because it's got a green side it's got a white side kind of common sense right so yeah kind of loosens it up a little bit but as far as like tails let's see here what do we got so it looks like you don't get as much of a tail on this one which I'm fine with uh, you don't really need all that much in order to tie these things off so yeah I like this these ones are a bit better so yeah so this is the old school method you would basically have a lot of tails to really secure it down but I mean if you're a corpsman or a medic and uh, someone had put this on a wound and uh, you had to unwrap it you still wanted to use it that, that would probably be a pain in the pain in the keister uh, to actually unwrap it just to give it a look-see or maybe you could just peel it away a little bit but you know then you're probably not having it too secure there but I know when I would wrap these around on the uh, dummies or the role players uh, it was a lot of wrapping because you'd have to keep uh, keep good pressure on it because eventually this stuff would actually stretch out a bit just a little bit so 
yeah, so, yeah, it, it is what it is, but uh, that's my experience. It's not elastic in the least, so, yeah. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and move on to a more modern interpretation of that. So, those were all good for uh, gunshot wounds, and so is this. So, an emergency trauma bandage, an ETD. So, North American Rescue. So, inside, you just have the dressing itself and no packaging with it. So, it's not like uh, some of the Israeli bandages where basically it's inside its own packaging and then <clears throat> uh, basically where uh, it, it, it has a secondary package other than the outer packaging. So, it's like in a plastic wrap where you can take off the main plastic and kind of save storage space. So, other side towards wounds. So... Let's see here. That's some pretty interesting Velcro. This stuff is interesting. Is this just glue? Well, this is an interesting kind of Velcro because it feels smooth to the touch. But yeah, interesting velcro -y material. Okay, so we got the other side to the wound. So obviously we would grasp it like this. This doesn't seem like it has as much, you know, surface area or not surface area, but room to really absorb blood. But maybe they learned their lesson that it doesn't need that much, but basically it's like an ace bandage. Uh, yeah, it's like an ace bandage with the, uh, um, with the gauze on it. So, yeah. And then you got this little bit of Velcro right here to kind of keep it tied down. That's kind of nice. So when you're basically shucking it out like that, it takes a little bit for it to... Like if you're doing it one-handed, it would take a little bit to get it unraveled. And then you have little extra areas too, so it doesn't unravel too much as you go out. So that's really cool. And that's and if you don't need it all, you can just you know velcro it off. I actually like that. So basically a quarter twist and then put it on there. So this velcro is actually kind of interesting, but it has a good elasticity to it. Kind of like an ace bandage, but it doesn't seem to give as much. Like uh, sometimes with ace bandages, if you do this, it'll it won't go exactly back where you uh, you had it originally. But I do like that. So at the end here, obviously you got something to secure it with. Uh, not really too much of a fan of having this uh, this part all the way at the end. I mean, I guess you could always just take this out and put it wherever you want, but Basically, you'd have to unwrap this and then <laughs> put it in there somehow or, or just slip it on. So, if all I needed was about that much, then yeah, I could just slip it on and then re-secure it and do some kind of, uh, you know, I guess the Velcro, if you don't think the Velcro is enough, then, yeah, you have this to kind of pinch the material in, the extra material. Eh, I don't know. I, I, it is what it is. It's, it's up to the individual to decide for themselves, really, I suppose. But, yeah, so this is an emergency trauma dressing. I know there's a, there's a, basically a civilian model out there, or one that's not necessarily advertised as a trauma, but, yeah, there's... There's another model out there that goes by a different name, but it's basically the same concept. So, anyways, that's basically the old versus the new, I guess you could say, as far as a comparison of these. You got the old school models, and you got the, the newer model. So, yeah, so trauma dressings, kind of interesting. So, let me know what you think in the comments below about this old school first aid stuff. Uh, I find it kind of interesting to go back and see what uh, what the origins of uh, first aid and uh, combat treatment and everything you know, where it basically comes from from where it was until to where it is now. So, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. You guys have a good one.